Hello and welcome to KPFK's debate series for the 2021 local board delegate elections, where you will hear from various listener candidates. My name is Jose Benavides, and I will be your moderator. The topics to be discussed cover key topics facing KPFK and Pacifica Foundation as a whole, and questions submitted directly by KPFK members. Please note that all viewpoints presented are those of the participants and do not reflect the position of the Pacifica Foundation or KPFK. The program starts with opening statements, followed by a debate covering topics from a selected predefined topic list and ending with questions from listener members. The order of candidates and topics have been selected by using a random sequence generator from random.org. This hour, we are joined by Jack Neff, Janine Ron, and Rocio Rivas. Before starting the debate, each candidate has one minute to make an opening statement. Candidates will hear a bell when they have 10 seconds left and two bells when their time is up. My name is Jack Neff. I'm running as a listener candidate for the KPFK uh, Listener Station Board because um, KPFK Radio works best when it broadcasts diverse voices providing censored news, critical education, and soul-stirring entertainment from a local and global perspective. KPFK is free radio without broadcasting commercials. I appreciate the listener sponsors who pay the bills at KPFK. KPFK is airing voices for peace, justice, liberation, self-inquiry, skepticism, and real-time political struggle on live radio. KPFK gives regular time to alternative voices. KPFK is also changing the system by broadcasting censored voices in English and in Spanish. Management, the local station board, and KPFK staff need to work together to create a publicity campaign to show the wide world of LA radio listeners that censored information, critical education, diverse analysis are always there on KPFK. Thank you. Janine Run, you have one minute for your opening statement. Thank you. Um, I'm Janine Run. And I've been an avid listener of KPFK for over 10 years. I've served as its secretary for the past 18 months and as an active board member for the last eight months. I've been uh, serving on the LSB Finance, Governance, and the GM Search Committee, as well as the on the national level, the PNB Bylaws Revisions Task Force, ex uh, Elections, and Audit Committees. I have been very involved and I'm doing the work, so to speak. I think of it as an extension of my community activism and the progressive movement that is such a big part of my life. KPFK is a beacon, especially in these times where our communities thirst for honest broadcasting. My cable station recently discontinued free speech TV channel. KPFK and its programming is there for me and all the audience whose interests and passions are getting squeezed out of the mainstream media. Other radio stations don't even come close to filling that void. Thank you very much. Thank you, Janine Rohn. Rocio Rivas, you have one minute for your opening. Hello, everyone. Go ahead. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Rocio Rivas. I am um, I'm currently on the LSB board. I've been on the board for KPFK for since January, so I'm going on eight months. Um, I have been a listener of KPFK. I'm going back in my memory bank, I believe in high school, and then um, I became a listener of KPFA back in, in, in Berkeley. So for me, KPFK has been, or just the Pacifica Network overall, is um, it's, it's unique. It's democracy and media. It, it's, a, it, it's radio for the people that we really need at the moment. Um, as a progressive and also political scientist, I believe in shared governance. And KPFK and, and the Pacifica, um, all the networks within the station provide that. And that's something that's very rare. And that's something that we need to uh, pres preserve. And that's why we're on this. And this well. No worries. Sorry. Um, OK, so now we're going to move into the debate. Um, the debate format consists of assigning one topic to one candidate as determined by the initial random sequence and allowing the candidate 
two minutes to develop their answer. All other candidates following the order defined by the initial random sequence get 30 seconds each to comment or to ask a follow-up question. The structure iterates through all candidates until we've had, had an opportunity to address the topic in depth. Stand by for a second. Okay, Jack, this is your topic. What is your understanding of the role of unpaid staff play at KPFK? How do you think they should be represented? You have two minutes. Thanks, Jack. Um, unpaid staff at KPFK uh, is, is a job classification. I mean, I think there's, it's one thing to ask me what I think the role is, and I think it's another question to really look at um, what unpaid staff uh, do at KPFK. And if you're interested in radio and you're interested in working at KPFK, how do you move from being a volunteer um, onto unpaid staff? Um, you look uh, to if someone wants to increase their involvement um, in the station, in uh, broadcasting, uh, all the exciting programming that KPFK has. Um, my understanding is, is that, for example, um, uh, Fernando Vasquez, who is the producer of the Spanish language programming in Formativo Pacifica, which I understand goes from LA and is syndicated throughout the Spanish speaking world, uh, and is a, Fernando Vasquez is a very well respected journalist. Um, and yet, uh, despite putting on, um, what, 16 hours of original programming each week um, and, and running it like it's a, a newsroom or a, a, a movie drama. Uh, and Fernando Vasquez is my understanding, he's unpaid staff. So in that case, the role is gigantic as the producer of uh, massive amounts of content and deserve lots more credit and uh, understanding for the work they put in. Uh, other unpaid staff um, also perform miracles and keep the fun drive going and run the board up to, uh, are the backbone of KPFK. Thanks, Jack. What is your <laughs> understanding of the role that unpaid staff play at KPFK? How do you think they should be represented? Well, um, you're talking about our volunteers um, and that that's the kind of the heart of the station. Um, producing, yes, um, that's great when they can be active, but a lot of times they're, or active in the programming. Um, but yeah, keeping the fun drives alive is, is really important. Um, I think maybe one of the reasons this is a question is uh, as far as representation. You know, we just had a bylaws. Time. Oh, Thank okay, you. I thought it was two minutes or? No, I think the, the opening to the question is two minutes and then the responses are 30 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Re Renee can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Rocio, you have 30 seconds. Okay, time goes fast. Um, unpaid staff, volunteers, they are an asset. They are, if anything, the voice of the community. They are what brings programming to KPFK and they're the reason why KPFK is around, right? We have volunteers, they, um, they provide the services, they provide the, the, the needing, the, the worker, the labor that's needed um, to keep the station running without volunteers. Um, I don't believe KP would be, Hi. they're important. Thank you, Rocio. So now we move on to the next topic. Janine, this is your topic. What is your understanding of the financial problems of KPFK and those of Pacifica as a whole? How do you propose to resolve these problems? You have two minutes, Janine. Oh, great. Um, well, I sit on the finance committee and have been since before I was even a member. So, um, I think, you know, we have an opportunity with the new GM coming in. And I think that um, most, I was on the GM search committee along with Rocio. Um, and I think we have someone coming in and Mikael uh, that understands, you know, the, the whole job of a GM. And I'm looking forward to working with him because 
I think that a piece of the puzzle is that KPFK looks to someone else for the bookkeeping, a third party. And if we could bring that into the station and do more of it ourselves, not that it couldn't be enhanced by a third party, but it would let our manager know more about how our money is being spent. A lot of people are a fan of scaling down our, um, our staff, and it is the most staff station in the, in the network. Um, but then there's also some really great ideas that have come up as far as growing our audience. And by growing our audience is um, bringing in more donations. And I think that um, that is more of the way to steer. And I'm looking forward to a refresh button because I feel like the internet is an untapped resource. Um, but basically, you know, I think people are of the opinion that we just need to start raising more money. And that means that the programming, we have to become more relevant and we have to be more um, uh, visible uh, to new to new listeners. And, um, and I think that's an important step that we have to start taking. And I feel like we've had a roadblock and it's opening up now. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Rocio, you have 30 seconds. What was the question again? I know how to do sure. it. Um, what is your understanding of the financial problems of KPFK and those as of Pacific as a whole? How do you propose to revolve, resolve those problems? Um, well, from what I've gathered, and I've been attending the uh, finance committee meetings and the governance and trying to immerse myself as much as possible in the last couple of months. And from my understanding, yes, it has been um, our costs outweigh the, the revenue that's coming in. And I agree. I, I know they've been cutting down on staff and some costs here, but really, it really lies on programming and creative fundraising. We really need to seek more um, the youth, the younger audience. We need to bring maybe some off air um, fundraising. Jack, same question. Um, the uh, financial crisis at KPFK is gonna be solved with increasing income, right? Income is what we're, we're after revenue, like a regular business that operates on, on revenue that it brings in during its period of operation. Um, KPFK creates digital media content. Uh, I like what Janine said about going out to the internet. You know, I like what Rocio said about reaching younger audiences. Uh, if listeners are tired of the premiums, let's give them high quality digital content from the Pacifica archives. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, now we're going to move on to the next uh question. Rocio, this is your topic. It has been challenging to maintain accurate membership lists, listeners and staff members at all stations. What is your understanding of the of this problem? And how do you propose to resolve this? You have two minutes. Um, uh, as far as membership li lists, I know that there's a new software, um, Allegiant software that uh, was recently installed um, in some in the stations, KPFK. So transitioning into this new software has been um, a little shaky, but with the new GM, I know this is one of the issues that will be under his purview. And, um, you know, getting a more uh, familiar with the software will help that. I think cleaning up the list of the members uh, of the membership list is a big project that needs to be, you know, really worked on. So I think that would be a project that the new GM would follow. And I think that um, all of the, the executive director, the general managers and membership directors, I think it has to be hands on. This is something that just cannot, uh, you know, uh, uh, the cleaning the list of the members can just be fall upon one person. I think it's a big project that needs to be really focused on. Um, if outside call centers are used to do pledge funding, I think we need to get the inf accurate information from any outside um, call centers that we use and how to, you, you know, working with that and incorporating that with what the, the data that we have now. So I think it's really reaching, uh, you know, cleaning out what we have, re looking at the data on which listeners don't we have, where are the gaps, how can we um, not only clean it up, but also expand our list so that expanding our list would also, um, you know, help with fundraising and donations. So I think it's just a big project that really needs to be handled hands-on, particularly with the general manager and the board really needs to 
um, we really need to be on top of that as well, because that has been a big issue uh, for quite some time. So. Thank you. Jack, same question. Um, the, the issue of uh, staying organized on the uh, Lister uh, sponsor list and keeping an accurate calendar of whose uh, membership is coming up for annual memberships are coming up for renewal. And um, you know the real nuts and bolts bookkeeping takes needs um, needs a, a careful hand. And I don't know what KPFK used to do in the old days when everything was done with index cards. Uh, but I think maybe we need to look back at some something more more proprietary. Thank you, Jack. Janine Run. I'm, I'm going to ask you to read the question again. Sure. Um, if you don't mind, sure, thanks. Sure, no problem. There we go. Um, let's see. Here it is. It has been challenging to maintain accurate membership lists, listeners and staff members at all stations. What is your understanding of this problem and how do we propose to resolve it? Okay, um, yeah, allegiance is a big part of that. I mean, we talk about it all the time. I think it came into play at the station about um, a year ago and Anyel Fields was always, he was still in the process of getting it all set up and getting the database up to speed. So that's going to be an advantage um, to our new GM coming in. I know for me, I've, I've been a member, but I don't get uh, regular emails or I don't get phone calls. And um, I know that a reminder, the, the um, donations, uh, reaching out for donations and showing a fresh face um, would be a great idea for us moving forward. Thank you, thank you. Um, and now we're gonna move into the selected questions from the list submitted by listener members. And each candidate will have one minute to respond uh, we'll take as many questions as time allows. And uh, let's start with, okay, here we go. What are the strengths and weaknesses of KPFK's programming? And should the LSB members be involved in determining programming? Jack, you have one minute to answer that question. That's um, a very uh, interesting question. I believe how much the LSB should influence the LSB should have on programming is contained in the bylaws, right? The bylaws of which uh, the revision was defeated and the current bylaws, which give the LSB a certain amount of, uh, of governance over KPFK. In fact, the LSB does have a governance committee and I'm interested to learn from, from Rocio and, and Janine um, what their experience uh, is with uh, with governance of uh, of uh, of KPFK program, and to what extent actually um, the LSB does have uh, a say on program. My personal feeling is is that it it's as um, programmers should be given a lot, as much latitude to to produce their art. Audio, radio is art, and these broadcasters and and audio producers. Um, make am amazing content, all each with their own gifts. Um, I just have feelings about personal preferences, which may or may not uh, be relevant. Janine? Well, I think um, the strength of KPFK, I just feel like is its potential. Um, it's got what it, it has a mission statement that uh, talks about community and it can be such a service for community. Um, I, I, I believe in that strength. I, we do have diverse programming. Um, I think that uh, with the, with, I would like to see, and I think it would be welcomed by listeners old and new, is a more diverse political programming. Um, we we have us programmers that are throughout the week at the same time, and and although that that is um, great for the people that are listening to them at that time period, it would be nice to mix it up a little bit. And um, weaknesses, another weakness, I feel like. Um, we just talked about this in the GM search committee. There were so many good ideas as far as the flow, um, you know, having a talk program and then moving into uh, something similar to keep the same listeners engaged. Um, Thank you. Uh, same question. Okay. 
Um, so the strengths of the um, KPFK programming is that it's very, very diverse, it's very unique. You have um, political shows, you have uh, self-help, you have um, commentary. So I think there's a lot there um, that it's already going on. However, is it, does it flow? Is it consistent? Are we changing the programming back and forth? I mean, these are the issues that are, I think it's a weakness. I think there's a lot of good shows, but the weakness is uh, changing the shows in different hours. I mean, our listeners want to have a consistency. You know, they want to know that the show is going to be at this time and not have to change. So I think that's something that we need to look at. Um, and I think it need, the weakness is we need more more diverse uh, voices. We need younger voices. We need, um, there are really good Spanish speaking um, shows. I think there's some gaps that we need to really work on. Thank you. Next question. Do you have any ideas on how Pacifica can generate new listeners and market to a younger audience? Jack, let's start with you one minute. Um, you know, LA, KPFK exists in the largest radio um, market in the world. Los Angeles has more FM stations that charge more for commercials because they have the largest listenership and the competition for between talent for radio stations to attract talented radio people on on air and and to uh market their particular brand of radio i think pacifica's mission is exactly i mean there's there is nothing else like it in the market to to say that it's free speech peace and justice um interfaith skeptic education you know all with you know time to boogie on friday and saturday nights and uh a, a radio that's a social phenomenon. Um, and I think that when that idea gets out there, when we all go together and push um, the way that it's done, then the audience, of course, is going to be there because it's a huge market. Thanks. Janine Rohn, same question. Okay, so ideas to bring in new listeners, I believe. Um, yeah, it, it, young listeners would be amazing. Again, these aren't my ideas. So a lot of great ideas came out of our GM search committee, which um, talked about um, more community broadcasting where, you know, and, and this would be so much a part of the, um, the mission statement is to bring in community leaders that can learn how to broadcast and or learn how to report from their areas and and not just politics but what's going on in the arts and really kind of give some ownership to different areas and you know whether it's LA or other areas of the um, you know the found the national um, I really believe that there's a uh, an untapped opportunity in the internet, um, not only to just in, to uh, pique the interests of new new listeners, but then actually feed them what they're looking for. There's a groundswell of progressive activism um, that's happening right now, and I feel like we 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 can steer our ship to capture a lot of that. Right. Thank you, um, Rocio. Um, yes, I agree with Janine. I think there's um, a lot of, there's a huge hunger for the youth right now to get alternative news, to get different voices than what's out there and even in a PR or out of those other uh, progressive uh, uh, radio stations. They want to hear, they, they want, they're hungry for new music, they're hungry for new political uh, voices. And I think the creativity, uh, we heard a lot of it uh, during the GM search, where there could, there's, there are podcasts, there, um, there can be uh, creative ways of bringing the, the, the programming to the people visually through podcasts, through there's Twitch, where it's something that hasn't been tapped on fully by radio stations. Um, like I said, YouTube with live programming where um, people can call in and listen and actually you know, see that they're being, you know, that they're on the air, right? And I think we're more visual, I think we can, um, create a hybrid between, you know, visual programming and bringing that information to the youth. That's somewhere that we need right. to. Thank you. Here's the next question. 
What can be done to shorten the fund drives and make existing fund drives more interesting? Let's start with Jack. One minute to respond. Um, fund drives, uh, yes, the KPFK, I don't know if it's the same way throughout the network all the time, but right now KPFK is doing a lot of fund drives and um, the they don't generate uh, that much excitement. There are some new items that come out. There is fun drive programming, I think, which is worth listening to and tuning into. Um, but overall, the pitch and the diversion from the news and from uh, developing stories, I'm disturbed sometimes when fun drive is going on and there's some fantastic breaking story that is really a KPFK kind of Pacifica, peace and justice, you know, political movement story underplayed in the press. It would just so much cash, but it stays to the same fund drive um, reruns. So the idea is that KPFK in the network produces uh, every day 24 hours of unique content. Uh, it's uh, recorded digitally. Um, in some cases, it's really exceptional audio quality. Market that time. Janine. Well, um, I think, you know, there is just really a lot of suggestions for local news. You know, we're, we're missing that. It, it stopped, it, um, I guess, uh, more than a year ago. And I think if we were to start doing things that are, we have to refresh ourselves a bit because I think that's the way we're gonna engage new listeners. We're gonna get more people uh, donating. They have to see that we're stepping up our game. And I think that fundraisers that were live events um, would be amazing. Um, fresh new shows um, and, and saying, you know, like the podcasting Rocio brought up, um, you know, th that could be sort of a sponsored thing. But I think if people can see that we're trying to stay relevant with our area and the issues and the music and the culture, then they'll they'll kind of perk up and we'll get those new donations and they'll see that we're we're adjusting ourselves to what's needed right now. Rocio, go ahead and answer that question. Okay, I'll do it really quick. Um, so I agree. No, you we you have a minute, by the way. You have a minute. So totally. So the fun drives. Um, I think we need to be more strategic. I think they we need to be more creative in how the fund drives are when they're being held. I think there's data that we need to look at such to evaluate when is the most opportune time, when is the time that we receive the most monies. Um, but overall, I think the fund drives have to be connected, like Janine mentioned, live events or even speaker series. When you have a special speaker that's going to come and I was like, oh, and you know, there's a fun drive. If you want to have these special speakers come, you know, we you need the support. But I think we need to go, you know, step back from doing fun drives when you're so desperate. You know, it's like, oh, we need the money. You know, it's like I think we need to do fun drives with the vision and and um, the objective of like, look, we're doing we like Janine said, we're doing something fresh. We're you know trying to keep up with the times. We're not the old way of doing. You know, this is more progressive and i think that would be hundreds okay thank you so here's the question the next question what do you think is the most serious problem needing the most immediate attention at kpfk and pacifica what do you propose as a solution for this problem let's start with uh, jack gee um let's see i had 15 seconds there to uh to figure out that that's a very thorny problem, uh, the, and it, it's it's a uh, it's a nest of problems, and it 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 probably betrays my interest to say um, which uh, problem I think is is first. Is it the uh, you know programming that I don't like, or the the people who say that uh, balancing the books is more important than the programming, or is it uh, the um, you know, disruption of the programming because of these very long fun drives. Um, I think that there's a community of people who support this station and they're 
include unpaid staff. It includes volunteers. It includes the LSB. It includes um, everyone who sees free radio is important is, uh, is probably also included in that community. Let's ask them. Thank you. Janine Rome? Well, I think it's, they're all linked. Um, you know, fundraising, of course. I mean, we're, we're at a really um, critical time for the station and, but that's linked to the programming, right? So um, how quickly could we start to get programming up that would um, encourage new listeners and, and a prep, perhaps past listeners that have stopped listening, which is also an issue. Um, so I see it as um, kind of a, a, a match there um, because our fundraising isn't gonna go anywhere. We're not having very good fundraising time right now. And it's like, okay, now we get a new GM. We actually don't have a program uh, director right now. When he comes in, we need to kind of hit that and uh, start presenting ourselves so that we can get the fundraising going with the programming that we need. So hand in hand, sorry, that's a tricky answer, I guess. Thank you. Rocio? Um, yes, I would agree. I, I was just saying that all everything is so interconnected. Um, you need good programming when you have a, you know a good consistent strong programming you you know you do public relations you try to bring in the um the audience right you bring in audience you bring in membership you bring in revenue so everything i think right now i think the biggest issue or problem is creating it's like a holistic vision and goal of where kpfk wants will go wants to go um and i think with the new gm coming in i think you know there'll be more new, new ideas, new perspectives, new experiences that he's bringing in that will help us create this vision. And I think working with the LSB, working with the, the general manager, the executive director, in order to create this new vision that interconnects everything, right? The programming, the audience, the fundraising, all of this is so connected, but we need to start somewhere. And I think that's where we need to create this vision that will come with this new Time. Do you think that those who vote and run in delegate elections and referendums are representative of uh, the listener sponsor population? And how can we increase participation from the community that KPFK serves? Let's go with Jack. Um, the, um, Jose, the, the best answer would be the uh, KPFK local station board outreach committee, um, which uh, is, um, involved with, with contacting members in the community to determine who is interested in uh, KPFK, who's interested in radio and who has time to uh, bring some of uh, their uh, resources or magic uh, into, into the picture. Um, so we do have a mechanism for that, how much activity or how much energy can be directed into the outreach committee, committee work and, and what they can bring in. But I think one thing that is um, has been brought up is having KPFK at public events. Now, right now, public events are really on hold because of the pandemic. But should that ever lift, a KPFK banner, a table, and a presence at as many uh, public gatherings as possible will only improve uh, our standing and be attractive. Time, Janine? Um, I, Jack, I really agree. The outreach committee is, you know, there's been a lot of distraction the last year or two. I mean, probably way before that, I'm sure. But, you know, um, the outreach committee, because we've been drawn towards finance and programming and all that, the outreach committee is really set up to do that youth outreach, you know, um, and, and, and public events. I think that's a great idea. You know, I don't see the banner of uh, KPFK at events and you could have a table and be talking about the handing out the programming. And I just, that part of it isn't really happening. So I, I, I'd like to just agree with Jack. <laughs> awesome. Let's go to uh, Rocio, same question. Repeat the question again, sorry. Do you think that those who vote and run in delegate elections and referendums are representative of the listener sponsor population? And how can we increase participation from the community at K that KPFK serves? 
Um, from what I've, um, from my experience, I, I've realized that a lot of the members in LSB have, you know, have been participants for years, you know, for decades, and and that's great. I mean, I think that's uh, that brings institutional history, that brings commitment and dedication. Um, however, I think that in order to bring in new listeners um, to really, you know, be part of a referendum or any change. I think you really need to reach out to candidates, um, new candidates. And I think like for myself, I was not aware that I could, you know, being a KPFK listener, I can also be on a board until I was provided with the information. I think there are a lot of listeners out there that don't know that this, you know, KPFK is, is a listener democracy, right? We, we, we listen to our, our uh, the listeners, the audience. And I think a lot of, there hasn't been a lot of outreach. Um, and like, like, you know, Janine mentioned, I think, a lot of because so much focus has been on finance and programming and fundraising that outreach has not been as as um, strong as it should be. Excellent. So now we're going to move into the the uh, closing statements. You each will have one minute. Let's begin with uh, Jack. You said your closing statement. Thank you, thank you, Jose, and thank you to the national election supervisor and the local election supervisors for this opportunity and this wonderfully run debate, uh, despite it being on Zoom. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to reach out um, and and listen and share uh, uh, our position on uh, on the the list, local station board. The KPFK Local Station Board is a democratic committee created by the bylaws of the Pacifica Foundation National Board. So listener sponsors and KPFK staff, paid staff and unpaid staff, can be involved in KPFK decision making. In Southern California, 98% of the commercial radio market is about corporate controlled for-profit messages. KPFK is the exception to media censorship, and KPFK's local station board should support the Pacifica National Board's mission of not-for-profit radio, listener-supported and independent. Time. Thank you. Janine Rohn? I, um, I, I come from an independent film background. Uh, that's what I do in my profession, and... Um, this and I'm also an activist in my district. I feel like my work, um, even though I just started uh, to be the secretary 18 months ago, I feel like it's an extension of my activism work. And um, it just encompasses so much that I hold important um, in our lives. And I, I really have rolled up my sleeves and thrown myself into it, you know? Um, and I, I really believe that that kind of attitude um, uh, gets results. And so I wanna bring my experience of dealing in a creative world and also what I do is the business end of it. And, and I often have to bridge gaps, um, bring the two areas together. And I really feel like that background has been of a benefit and I want to just keep doing more of that. Um, thank you. We'll see you. Um, well, I want to, like I said, I just I joined in January and I became, I was elected vice chair, um, which was a little, you know, a little scary, but I'm the kind of person that when I'm committed to something, I'm going to dedicate to something, I go all in. Um, and that's why I have been attending committees. Like I, I am committed to KPFK and I really believe in what it stands for, for progressive radio, for alternative news. And I know it's potential and I really want to be a part of that growth and that vision. Um, and like I said, I just feel like I just got my feet wet and I want to really continue to immerse myself and really um, save, not save, but really bring the growth and development of KPFK. And that's why I want to continue running in my profession. I'm a, re I'm a researcher. I'm very active in my community as well. And I bring in the, the research evaluation part of it. And when I'm, you know, when I bring in that lens, um, it's a lens of um, analysis. So. Thanks everybody so much um, for participating in this debate, this series, this 2021 series. My name is Jose Benavides. For more information, visit elections.pacifica.org. 
for all questions and to file a ballot request form. Make sure to cast your ballot before 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, October 15, 2021. Thank you.